Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Hello, everybody. Actually, I'm sure I don't sound like Kathy. I am Lori Hawkins, and I am here as a contributing host. And uh, Kathy has invited me actually to be the first Monday of every month. You are going to hear this voice instead on Financially Speaking. And we are going to navigate through some of the toughest challenges, you know, burning questions that are in your mind as a business owner and leader through these really interesting, uncertain, and and really potent times. So um, come back every Monday to hear from Kathy and her wonderful guests. And then first Monday of every month, you'll hear from me. And, uh, you know, if you have any ideas on different thoughts you would like, please don't hesitate to reach out to Kathy. And we would love to make sure that that's the focus of our conversation. For today, though, uh, we have a really important conversation, which is around that feeling of overwhelm and giving you some tips and tricks and ideas to be able to navigate from that overwhelm into feeling organized. Because in organization, you feel freedom, you feel peace, and ultimately, we all want to get there. Um, It's been a really, you know, it's been a couple of years. It's been a tough couple of years energetically. I'm finding a lot of leaders and business owners really push to that place of overwhelm. And so I want us to start to lift that together, to start to open up the dialogue of welcoming in ways to shift past that overwhelm to what is actually available to you in that more organized and peaceful state. So I have been, for those of you that may not know me, I have been a business leader, a business owner for over 30 years, working with eight plus figure businesses, helping them to really redesign how they deal with their revenue, their results, and their raving fans with a real focus on leadership and how to serve the customer. So this is a part of all of that. A part of every business is that overwhelmed feeling. And Kathy and I were were really giggling about the fact that today happens to be the last day of tax season. And so what a really cool conversation to have. And I know she would want me to mention tax season. So for all of you people out there, make sure you get your taxes in. Um, Financially speaking, it's a really important part of um, just keeping up on your things and also um, managing your money and being able to be strategic with your money. And so um, just a reminder, today's the day. So get all that in. Um, so where, where are we going to go today? I have seven insights to share with you that will help you shift from that overwhelmed feeling into that organized feeling. So as you sit there right now, I just want you to think about when you hear this word overwhelm, what comes up for you? What feeling, what thought What is going on inside of you when you hear this word overwhelm? Do you think about your to-do list that seems too long? Do you think about the fact that you never get done the to-do list by the end of the day? What exactly is it that you hold on to? And then really lean into your body to feel what emotion comes up for you in that. Where do you feel that in your body and what's the emotion? Many times I would say we feel it through our shoulders and our neck. You know, when you start to kind of be grinding around your neck and trying to stretch it out and you get that, that even you can hear the tone in my voice changing, that feeling of tightness, that feeling of stress. And I'm wondering, have you ever reached the end of the day and felt like you were so busy 
that you couldn't even breathe. And yet you also felt like you didn't really get anything accomplished in that day. I'd love to say, give me a hands up. So I'll just say, reach your hand to the sky. Give me a, oh yeah, I've had that feeling. As you listen to this, I want to know if this describes your life in any way. You wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is you start checking your email right away. Then maybe you grab your cup of coffee and you continue to check those emails. You did have some intentions of starting the day by meditating, reading, maybe going to the gym or going for a walk. And yet here you are again at the start of this day, there's no time left for any of that again. You spend the whole day reacting to the bing, you know that sound, the bing of a new email or text. You just don't seem to have any time to even take lunch. And if you do, it's on the run, you're grabbing something through a drive through you're eating it at your desk or maybe even in your car. You go home with no extra energy reserves and you feel too exhausted to even interact with your family. There's no dynamic and meaningful conversations around a dinner table. You just don't have the energy. And even though you're tired and you can't seem to sleep, you mindlessly surf the TV, the Netflix anyways, or maybe it's the internet on your phone, or maybe it's a game on your phone, but you're exhausted and yet you keep doing that. Kind of that mindless escape type of activity. You feel completely swamped in work and yet you don't feel like you actually get anything truly accomplished. This is what I'm hearing from so many people today. You are not alone in feeling that way, if this resonated with you. Our lives are made up of activities that are more or less urgent or less urgent. So you've got more urgent, less urgent. And that means that everything we do falls into this spectrum or axis that we're gonna explore a bit today. What's really important is thinking about that story or scenario I just shared and learning to choose where you actually invest your energy. How do you build your actual calendar? How do you invest the moments that you have every single day so that at the end of the day, you go to bed feeling like, woohoo, I really, really accomplished some cool stuff today. We have 86 thousand seconds in a day. That's it. 86,000 seconds. And the question we have to ask every day as those feet plant the ground is how will we invest those seconds? Because before you know it, you'll be tucking into bed yet again and trying to figure that out. So let's go through the seven insights. The first insight is a huge thief, a thief of our time. And that insight is procrastination. Anyone, anyone have this as a challenge in their life? I love this quote around procrastination. It says, I do my work at the same time every day, the last minute. Does that resonate with you at all? One of the things I've been studying around procrastination is what is the actual sort of driver in procrastination? Because the reality is nobody is actually hardwired really to be a procrastinator. So there has to be something underlying that is creating that ongoing behavior. And one of them is actually this, this perfectionism gene that so many people have today where you ruminate over that final thing or something's not quite perfect. So you might, let's say you're writing something and you know that you want to edit that 
and it's, you want to get it out the door today, except, well, I don't know, it's not quite right. So I'll tweak it a little bit and we'll see what happens. And it is probably if somebody else read that, it's ready. It's awesome. Or the reality is you, you can always change anything later, except you leave it. And the next day you ruminate over it again and you switch it up a little bit again. Then the next day you ruminate, you switch. And this is that cycle of perfectionism without being able to ever say, it's good, it's good. I'm happy with it. I remember early in my coaching career, I was, I had the great pleasure of training with uh, Brian Tracy. And he said something so profound in those early days of my career. And I, I'll never forget this. He said, when you get to 80% of a decision, you need to go. And this is the same with so many things that are involved in our daily life and in our work life where at 80%, go, just go and know that you can make changes later and after. Everything is this process of iteration. And so since I heard that, I put at the top of my calendar every day, right beside the work I'm doing, it says take massive, imperfect action. And I kept that there for a long time. And I realized even that word massive was driving me towards perfectionism. And so I made this tiny little tweak to take small, imperfect action every day. And it is a game changer. So there's one insight that you might be able to incorporate into your daily practice. Because the reality is we have so much compelling information coming at us constantly. We have thousands of messages through social media, email, um, marketing on TV, anything all day long, it's coming at you. And we don't have the ability to process all that. And so it's creating because we can't narrow it. It's creating this procrastination piece. Now, I want to kind of share one more thing on the procrastination part of this, and that is our culture of instant gratification. I'm sure you've heard this. I'm sure you've experienced it. I'm sure you've felt it, is that need to have the instant hit by accomplishing something. And so because we want this dopamine hit to be able to do something, Pause and think about most of the activities that you do all day long. They don't necessarily have that dopamine hit that we've become used to desiring in all of the things that are going on in the world. So what does create instant gratification? Deadlines. Actual deadlines. So if you know that today at 6 p.m., something is due, wait, let's go back to the taxes. It's tax day. They're due today. It is amazing how many people today will be sending in that final information, or maybe even yesterday, right down to the wire, right down to that finish line being so clear is when most people take action. Why? because of the dopamine hit, that center in our brain that is used to getting that gratification. So work with that for yourself. Instead of just creating some long list of things, assign deadlines to each action of a project that you're working on. And when you do that, you'll notice that it sets you up for more success. So we are about to go to a break. Here we have been talking on Financially Speaking today about shifting from that place of overwhelm that so many of us are experiencing into a place of feeling organized. So the first insight we've shared is about really understanding what creates procrastination and adding in some tools that will help you manage that procrastination monster is what I call it. When we come back, we're going to talk about 
eating that frog. So now we've got monsters and frogs all coming to play with us. So we will be right back on Financially Speaking to learn more about how to eat that frog. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com this is the financially speaking show with financial advisor and educator kathy cook noble to participate in the program join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com you can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to kathy at bookkeepplus.ca now back to the program so I'm not Kathy Noble. However, welcome to Financially Speaking. I'm contributing host Lori Hawkins. Thrilled to be here on the first Monday of every month where we're just going to have conversations about things that are impacting business owners, entrepreneurs, and leaders in so many different capacities from leadership to sales to customer experience to just your habits. We're just going to dive into all of it to support everything that Kathy does, which is just so vital because she's that foundation without your finances and understanding your numbers, you know, that's where everything grows from. So I have just so much admiration and respect for Kathy and love all the work that she is doing. And I'm thrilled to be here as a part of her amazing community. Well, we were talking about seven insights to shift from overwhelmed to organized. And um, I was having a little private dance party there, which uh, felt really funny. Um, and I thought, OK, well, we're going to talk about eat that frog. So I decided today ahead of coming on, I was just going to lean into all the energy. So that meant I had to have a little chair dance with you all by my lonesome. I hope that you were chair dancing with me somewhere, somehow. Um, we only got to the first insight. Um, because it's a big one, which was procrastination. And part of supporting you in procrastination is this principle called eat that frog. And eat that frog actually was um, around a story shared by Mark Twain oh so many years ago, where he talked about dealing with the hard stuff first. So um, I had a really amazing conversation with our director today, um, who's on the show, Kim. Yay, shout out to Kim. And she was um, talking about the work she does and how for her, there's a specific time of day where her energy is really available to her. So I want to say around this eat that frog principle is one of the aspects of it is actually understanding yourself and when you have that energy available to you, because we all are very different. We get up in the morning in this house at 4 30 the alarm goes off and it makes a horrific noise I'm telling you I would never choose that it is my husband he is Mr. Morning he's I'm gonna call him that from now on he is Mr. Morning 
and he jumps out of the bed and he's ready to fly. And that's our gym time. So off to the gym, we go to get that exercise piece done and check the box on that commitment, which always feels really amazing. And, you know, lots of people say, well, why do you get up with him if you're not a morning person? And I do it for a couple of reasons. First of all, I might procrastinate it if I don't. And the second reason that I do it is I wouldn't actually go back to sleep anyways. So I might as well get up and, you know, fulfill something that's really important to being the best version of myself. The reason I bring this up, though, is he is Mr. Morning. I am not. I always joke that my brain, I think, actually turns on around 11. But hey, you want to have the deepest, most meaningful conversation at 11 p.m. or maybe even 1 a.m. in the morning? I'm your girl. I'm a night hawk. And uh, my energy is really high at night. So interesting, I actually um, will design the day so that I can come back into my office for anything that's creative later in the day. So you may put your frogs morning, midday, night. The message here is make sure you align your energy with your frog, because what we end up doing is creating a list of all the things that have to be done in a day, not thinking about energy not thinking about which one's most important. And we end up just going through them and you miss your energy moments. You miss your ability to align the best part of what you have to offer with what that thing is that needs done. So eat the frog is usually the ugliest, hardest thing for you to push through. And usually, which is so interesting is around the thing that will also have the most impact. So I'm going to use an example that's really near and dear to a lot of entrepreneurs is revenue generation, sales, driving the revenue into your business. For many business owners and entrepreneurs, you get into your business because you're you're passionate about something, you have an expertise in something, and that expertise typically isn't actually aligned with selling. And so for decades, I've supported entrepreneurs to really lean into understanding, you know, their secret sauce in the revenue generation, because businesses don't grow without earning and keeping new customers. And so it is really important to focus on that revenue generation. And so this would be a frog for so many people to say, okay, I recognize that. And so when would I have the most energy to be excited and passionate about um, investing time into that during the day. And that's your eat that frog. So that is all around procrastination. Let's step into insight number two, which is prioritization. And here's my quote for prioritization. It's not that we have little time, but more that we waste a good deal of it. Wow, we have become... It has, it has become an epidemic to answer, how are you doing with the word busy? How's everything going in your life? Busy. How are things in your business? Busy. How's your job going? Busy. How's the family? Oh, we're, we're really busy. I really, right here, right now, want to like put a stake in the sand that you never answer with that word again. It's, it doesn't really mean anything, first of all. And everybody has the same number of seconds in the day, 86,000. And everyone, everyone, yes, you too, has the ability to actually choose how they invest that time, how they invest every single second. And so if you're busy, if you're filling every single second, what else could you say instead that would actually provide some of that endorphin dopamine stuff versus just right now, say that word. How are you? Say the word busy. What do you feel? Well, icky, back to that tight. It doesn't instill this feeling of vibrancy and joy and awesomeness. It actually is the opposite. It's a negative, attracting word. What about, you know what? I am super effective today. 
How are you doing? I've been super effective. How are you doing? You know what? I'm really, I'm, I love my days. They're filled with such amazing things to do that I just feel so grateful to have the opportunity to do. I know these little, these things seem like tiny nuances, but they're so powerful. So instead of the autopilot word of busy, I just want you to pause and play around with it. It may seem really weird at first because your habit has become to say busy, but over time you'll find a new way and you'll notice how much it actually lifts your energy and just brings that power that you really actually want to bring to everything that you do. So how are we going to work with this um, prioritization piece? You really want to shift from everything we've been taught around building a to-do list. I want you to blow up the to-do list. To-do lists really are not that helpful. A prioritization list is helpful. A, ooh, I get to-do list versus I have to-do list, back to the energy. And I think one of the biggest challenges, and we've all been there, I've, I've absolutely done this in the past too, where it's just a brain dump. You know, here's all the things I have to get done today in complete random order of how they've popped in my head. What if instead you started prioritizing the most important task to some of the least important tasks? And the reason that this is really important in today's world, back to so much information, there is no doubt that we're moving faster, we're doing more. And so because of that, we want to make sure that when you hit that pillow at the end of the day, you're able to release that breath of, yeah, you know, today I really accomplished some meaningful things. And in order to do that, you've got to keep those most important things at the top. The other thing that is really prevalent is you think something's going to take X amount of time. And how many times when you believe something's going to take X, does it end up being X? So you've got a task on your list and you think, okay, that's going to take me probably about 15 minutes. How often does it take 15 minutes? I know for me, I'll fall on my sword here. I am so infamous at under expecting how long things will take me. So when you design your day, if you're doing that for everything on your list and you've less, left the most important thing at the bottom, you're probably not going to get to it. And then that's what creates that tension when you go to bed, tension you carry through your sleep, tension that you wake up with. Whereas if you prioritize and say, I'm going to get those most important things done first, then when the things at the bottom don't get done, it's okay. Those just can go to the next day and maybe even the next day. So really practice creating prioritization lists moving forward. Our number three insight is there is always room for bubbles. Yeah, bubbles. There's always room for bubbles. I am a love the pop the cork girl. I love my bubbly. I love my bubbly. And so I have to make sure that I design my week, that there is always a pop the cork bubbly kind of moment. And where was this inspired from? Not the bubbly part, but thinking that there's always room for it. Because flashback five years, I didn't make room for the important things. I was running on full speed, going on the treadmill, planting my face and hitting it and rubbing my nose. And that was, you know, really just, ah, it doesn't work. And I turned 50. And in that year started really understanding for some reason, I don't know what it was about the five zero, but that I needed to start choosing what it looked like and designing a life and a business that was fulfilling. And so much of that is wrapped around organization. I know, weird, right? But organization and being on purpose. 
So we are about to go for another break. We're here on Financially Speaking. I'm your contributing host, Lori Hawkins, um, here to support and amplify everything that Kathy Noble does in her business and on her podcast here. And we're going to go to our next break. When we come back, we are going to talk about what does it mean to make more room for bubbles? We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Money is complicated, right? Actually, no, it's not. You don't have to be a trader on Wall Street to get a handle on your money. TV shows often instill fear to keep you believing you can't understand it or do anything yourself. If dealing with your finances brings up a lot of other F words, then you need to read All Ladies Should Use the F Word, A Guide to Loving Your Finances by Kathy Cook Noble. Kathy helps you take control of your finances and leave the other F word, fear, in the dust. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Hello and welcome back. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here on Inspired Choices Network today and a co-host for, or I should say, contributing host for Kathy Noble for Financially Speaking. I have loved Inspired Choices Network for so long. So a huge shout out. I am a podcast junkie. So if you if you're getting me out of bed at that 430 in the morning to go to the gym, I am looking through Inspired Choices Network to see what podcast I can be inspired by that day because I, I got to wake up. So I need some of all of your encouragement from the great hosts on here and all of the 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 growth and sharing of messages that's happening here is just super powerful. So um, a huge shout out to Inspired Choices Network. So what about these bubbles? Well, I'm going to say this is adapted from a video on YouTube that is a teacher who is addressing his class. And, and he actually is, there is always room for beer. However, I'm not a beer drinker. So for me, it's there is always room for bubbles. So as the teacher is addressing his class, you perhaps you've seen this visual before. Think about, I'll walk you through it and just kind of visualize this with me. There's a big jug and he's filling the jug with these giant rocks. And as the rocks go in the jug, he's asking his class, is it full? He fills it all the way up to the rim with these big rocks. And the class responds, yes, it's full. Then he adds in some pebbles to the jug. And as the students are watching, they can see, no, it wasn't full. 
because the pebbles are able to sneak in between the crevices of the big rocks and they're able to find their own space. All the way to the top again with the pebbles and he asks the class again, is the jug full? And the class responds, yes. And he says, no, it's not full. So there he goes, he takes his sand. He adds the sand into the jug and the sand being so granular and small, it finds its way into all of those little spots that the big rocks and the pebbles hadn't taken up space in yet. The sand and the pebbles represent the small daily tasks that we fill our lives with. If we don't fit those big rocks in first, how will you be able to ever get to them? So think about that perspective. As the sand goes in, if we had put that in first, the big rocks would not fit. The pebbles wouldn't have fit either. So if you start with the big rocks, you create room for what is most important in life. And the sand and the pebbles can only fill the spaces in between. But there's more. At the very end, even though it looks so full with all of that in there, you can pop that cork and pour some champagne in and pour it over everything and watch it seep in. What's the lesson here? The lesson is that we always need to take time to have a glass of bubbly, a celebration with those that we care about, to pause and enjoy those moments in life. This story really can help you align how you spend your time with your real priorities. And when you do, that's what allows the space to still be there for a glass of bubbly or whatever that is for you. It might be a hike. It might be a vacation. It might be just spending time with family and friends. It doesn't have to have a, it doesn't have to have a glass of bubbly, um, but it, it, this is that metaphor for that feeling of being able to invest in the things that are really important to you. So as you think about your big rocks, what are those? It's back to that prior to prioritization that was insight number two, but this is just a little bit deeper level. So take some time to reflect on right now, where do you spend most of your time? If you think about this analogy, are you spending most of your time on the sand? Are you spending it on the pebbles? Are you spending it on the big rocks? Where, where do you really notice? In fact, take some time, pause after when you can listen to this again, and write down five things that every single day you spend the most amount of your time on. And then after that, look at that list and think about the biggest thing that you notice is zapping your energy. Think about every single day, you know, there's that one thing that just depletes that energy reserve that you have and reflect on the story, reflect on that thing. And now ask yourself what needs to change and then create those top three priorities that will be the big rocks so that you have room for everything else. Now in taking tiny, imperfect action every day, you also want to make sure that you hold yourself accountable to those actions. So write down what are the priorities and what's an actual action that you'll take towards those priorities. I just want you to pause and wonder, like even just having some of these insights, already you should be starting to feel like you can shift from overwhelm to organized which is again, that peace and joy and fulfillment is really what you're looking to. You don't care if you're organized, you care if you are fulfilled and feel like you're in flow and absolutely just living that best life. That's our desired outcome. Okay, we're gonna go to insight number four now. 
Insight number four was originally called Eisenhower's Principle. This is number four. However, it became mainstream when Stephen Covey created something called the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in that, what he termed the urgent, important matrix. This actually was based on something that Eisenhower did and how he managed his workload. So I want you to start by drawing this for yourself so that you have the visual. So grab a piece of paper in front of you, if you could, and draw a line straight up and down, and then a line horizontal. So what you're going to have is four quadrants that you're actually looking at. And in those four quadrants, on the left-hand side, at the top is important. The bottom, not important. And then on the top, you're going to write urgent and at the bottom, non-urgent. So let's navigate through these. Quadrant number one is your urgent and important. These are necessary. They're tasks that are urgent and important. The things that come at you that need taken care of. And that's why it's called the quadrant of necessity. So let's say an angry customer calls you on the phone and you have to navigate through that. Or you receive a phone call that someone in your family requires your help and support immediately. Or the printer in the office breaks down and it needs fixed like right now. People who live though primarily in this are in urgency constantly. And that becomes an addiction to needing, what do we get here again? The dopamine from always being in reaction mode. The gateway to the mind to getting to that organized, uncluttered place is to not live in that reactive necessity mode all the time. So now let's look at quadrant three. Quadrant three is below that, which is your urgent and not important. So with this, I like to say this is like distractions and interruptions and like just urgent but not important at all or other people's priorities on your own time, which is why it's not urgent. Many people right now are spending a lot of time in quadrant three distraction, quadrant one, necessity. Always reacting to other people's crisis, phone calls, emails, text messages, routine meetings, people dropping by your desk. All these things deceive you into thinking you're busy. <laughs> Back to busy. It deceives you into thinking you're actually getting a lot of stuff done because you're, act you're in action. You're doing stuff. But the reality is you're spinning your wheels. The truly important priorities are not getting focused on. So let's go to quadrant four. Quadrant four is non-urgent, not important. Uh, these guys are just a full-on waste of time. The non-urgent, non-important, it is sucking your time and not productive and not moving anything forward. So this could be the, you know what? I don't know what to do with myself. So I watch TV all night long, every single night. I play video games all night long. I surf the internet all night long, early hours into the night. I'm shutting my brain down and I'm just on autopilot. Please don't take me wrong. You absolutely want and need to do some of those things in your life. It's when it gets into this place where you're fully living there and you're unconscious to the behavior. You're not choosing to sit and watch a specific show. You're just kind of numbing out and going for it. It's really important to relax and have fun, um, but it's really important to be mindful about the choices that you make. And then we have quadrant number two, which is non-urgent, which can be misleading, but so, so important. 
This is the quadrant that drives extraordinary results. Your tasks here are important, but because they don't have that urgency of the, I need it now, come on, I need you now, we tend to push them down to the bottom. This quadrant, when you can focus on this, these are the things that will move everything you desire to create in your life and business forward. So people that are in this quadrant are thoughtful, creative, proactive, they plan, which is what we're talking about, prepare. They actually can get to the place where they prevent some of these crises from happening and also really alleviate that burnout, overwhelm state that we're talking about today. So as we're about to go to another break here on Inspired Choices Network with Financially Speaking, I just want you to think about for the next couple of seconds, which quadrant are you spending most of your time in? And when we get back from the break, we will move on to a few more insights to support you to shift into that awesome freedom that you're looking for. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook-Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at BookkeepPlus.ca. Now back to the program. Hello and welcome back on Inspired Choices Network. I am Lori Hawkins. I'm here as a contributing host on this amazing financially speaking show that is hosted by Kathy Noble and um, just love the work she's doing to really support everyone in building that F word that uh, so many of us struggle with to, you know, build our muscle around that and love, love, love finances. So before the break, we were talking about um, this insight around the four quad quadrants, which are known as the urgent important matrix. So you were asked, I asked you to reflect on where do you sit on the matrix and really thinking about everything going on in the world today, you know, we're pulled away by so many distractions and interruptions and crises in the moment. So I want you to just visualize this with me and compare it to the story that I opened with. Here's a day in the life. If you could choose to live in the non-urgent and important quadrant as much as possible, which is the beautiful place of freedom available, you wake up feeling refreshed and energized, even when it's 4.30 alarm clock. You get in a little exercise, a little inner size, you eat a healthy breakfast, and you tackle the most important thing first. You focus on the thing that will have the greatest impact. You have lunch to build real relationships. You work towards your desired goals and outcomes on a consistent basis. You create real meaning in your life and your business. How does that sound? So think about the consequences of neglecting this quadrant because that's what we're seeing happen in so many ways is because of all the other stuff in those three quadrants this one just gets ignored because there's no time left and in the end it will take you that mindfulness that I've talked about choosing to invest a nice portion of that 86,000 seconds in your day and invest those into truly being purposeful and mindful of living in quadrant number two. 
set yourself a little goal, set yourself an intention around that right now. What does that look like? How will you be more purposeful about spending less time on all that noise and more time on the purposeful action? Let's shift to insight number five. Insight number five is productive people do things differently. Think about someone that you know who is super productive and you watch them be in flow and freedom and you love everything they do. Watch what they do. Watch how they do it. Take some of the insights we've already shared because productive people do things differently. How will you do things differently moving forward? And then number six is the seven habits of highly effective people. I will say to this day, there is no better insight on getting to understand yourself and creating consistency than looking at Stephen Covey's seven habits. And so I just want to quickly share what they are and then encourage you to grab the book, research this. Number one, be proactive. Number two, begin with the end in mind. Where are you going so that you can get there? Habit number three, put first things first, the matrix we just talked about. Habit number four, think win-win, build collaborative types of relationships. Habit number five, Seek first to understand and then to be understood. Lean into understanding other people and what they're going through before you have this need for people to understand you. Habit number six, synergize. Figure out how one plus one can equal something much greater than two. And habit number seven, exactly what we're doing here together today is sharpen your saw. Continue to learn and grow and become the very best version of who who you are here to be. And now we move into insight number seven. I've been sharing these words throughout our conversation today, and it's all about igniting the freedom and the flow. So I want to give you a list to leave you with on how you can ignite the freedom and flow within you. Because when you can do that as a leader and an entrepreneur and a business owner, you hardly even need to focus on anything else that I've talked about because you're just going to achieve. The results are just going to flow from everything. Look ahead to what is possible. Trust in what is possible for you. Know what you stand for. Don't try to copy someone else. There is so much noise on social media of looking at other people and comparing yourself. Know who you are and know what you stand for. That will diminish any overwhelm that you feel. Pay attention to the details. You can work on less things and work on each of those things more effectively and more powerfully versus trying to do so much more. Always, always come from a place of creating more value in every conversation that you have with somebody else. Build from the strategy. Don't just have a chaotic everything happening. Know where it is that you are building from and what you stand for. Focus on building heart to heart human connections and human relationships. Boost your energy. We talk so much about energy today. Focus on those tiny few little things that you took away from today that will boost up your energy and magnetize your mindset. Focus on things that will give you the best mindset that you can possibly have. And my last one is always pop the cork and celebrate because when you spend time in celebration, you release all those amazing endorphins that absolutely burst that energy that we talked about. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today on Financially Speaking. Next week, join Kathy as she talks about real estate investing with special guest, Lisa Rogers. This will be really, really powerful. Real estate is such an important conversation today. Thank you and have an amazing, amazing week and practice some of these beautiful things that we talked about today. You've got this. Go create freedom and flow. 
Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.